good evening everyone uh, uh, can anyone uh, share my slides please puja you have to do this job yes sir surbi please share the slide so dr sajna uh, can you meanwhile answer my question in the chat box yes sir uh so sir there are uh, one of the few reasons the combination chemotherapy arm chosen also matters uh, with the response to the immunotherapy uh in the uh, edazolizumab and the napaclo edazolizumab study the chosen arm was uh, napaclitaxel carboplatin and in the pembrolizumab new agent setting there were anthracyclines included if there were anthracyclines included in the regimens uh, those uh, immunotherapy trials showed benefit retrospectively based upon the tonic trial and the one the ios which did not use uh, anthracyclines uh, which just based on taxins and carboplatins they uh, did not show uh, benefit so probably uh, the anthracyclines induce more uh, immune system uh, the more they trigger the immune system more rather than the other chemotherapies this could be the reason for differences between the ios please go ahead okay uh, so uh, i think the slides are visible sir yeah uh good evening everyone i'm very uh, glad i am very uh, grateful uh, for this opportunity thank you narik sir for uh, this excellent event so in the next 4 uh, to 5 minutes what we are going to discuss is a uh, uh, phase 2 trial the meteora trial uh, which uh, has a very interesting uh, uh, aspect of uh, uh, treatment in metastatic breast cancer who are hormonal receptor positive and her to negative what it has uh, basically planned to uh, do was it has brought back the oral metronomic treatment in metastatic disease as a first line or a second line treatment and it has uh, compared it to the standard of care we have been routinely using weekly paclitaxel in uh, those metastatic breast cancer patients who are er positive and her to negative and who are in risk crisis basically those patients who need chemotherapy so uh, can we go back to the first slide please so this was a randomized phase 2 trial of uh, oral metronomic treatment that included oral venorelbin cyclophosphamide and capacitabine that was the vex regimen and it was compared with weekly paclitaxel as a first line or a second line treatment in those patients who had metastatic breast cancer and who were er positive and her to negative uh next slide next slide please so this was the basic background and study design uh, uh it was basically uh, the vex regimen that is venorelbin uh, cyclophosphamide and capacitabine was administered in one arm to those patients who had metastatic breast cancer for as long as the patient has the possibility of deriving a benefit from it and it was compared to the standard paclitaxel arm so all those patients who had histologically confirmed uh, metastatic breast cancer er positive or to negative measurable or non measurable disease but a radiologically evaluable disease according to the resist 1.1 criteria uh, at least 18 years of age with a ps performance status of icoc ps of at least 0 or 1 uh, patient have should not have received any uh, uh, should not have received one more than one lines of prior chemotherapy for their metastatic disease uh the uh, cns metastatic patients who were symptomatic were ruled out they were they, that was an exclusion criteria so these patients were randomized in one to one is to one ratio uh, the standard arm was a paclitaxel arm in which paclitaxel was given at a dose of 90 mg per meter square weekly day one day 15 and then uh, a 14 day gap uh, that was a 28 day cycle until progression or uh, toxicity Uh, it was compared with the metronomic regimen in which venorelbin was given at a dose of 40 mg per orally 3 uh, days in a week cyclophosphamide was given 50 mg on a daily basis that was continuous and capacitabine was given 500 mg uh, thrice a day and that was continuous uh, very interestingly the primary endpoint in this uh, trial was a uh, time to treatment failure 
which uh, takes into account that chemotherapy may need to be stopped due to the lack of tolerability, lack of efficacy, or the patient preference through subjective symptom assessment. And uh, the pro pro progression-free survival and the overall survival, the safety were considered as the secondary endpoint. Next slide, please. So these are the patient characteristics. Uh, approximately 69 patients were randomized in the pyrotexal arm as compared to the 71 patients who were in the VEX regimen arm. Uh, median uh, median uh, age of these patients were around 61 years, quite comparable in both the arms. Uh, one interesting fact was uh, a lot of patients, approximately 46% of the patients had already received some sort of uh, CD, CDK4-6 inhibitor therapy prior to um, randomization in this arm. Uh, next slide, please. So the primary endpoint that was time to treatment failure, the result was the, it was a, uh, the TTF was significantly better in those patients who had received the REX regimen as compared to those patients who received weekly paclitaxel. Uh, the median time to treatment failure was 8.3 months as compared to 5.7 months in paclitaxel arm. And the hazard ratio was 0 0.6, 0 0.61 with a significant p-value. Uh, similarly, progression-free survival was also quite significant in the VEX regimen. Next slide, please. Now, those patients who had received CDK4-6 inhibitor, uh, they were also, there was a subgroup analysis. They were also, they uh, had shown a quite significant improvement in the TTF, 8.4 months versus 5.6 months. Hazard ratio 0.63. Next slide. Progression-free survival was significantly better, 11.1 months versus 6.9 months in, uh, 6.9 months was in the paclitaxel arm and uh, the uh, 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 hazard ratio was 0.67, although overall survival was not significantly different between the two arms. Next slide. So when it comes to toxicity, obviously we, uh, the, the trial showed that uh, those patients who had received the VEX regimen had higher uh, rates of uh, uh, grade three and four toxicities, but they, uh, the grade one, two and toxicities were easily manageable. The uh, common toxicities that were seen in VEX regimen was uh, neutropenia. The frequency of target grade three plus adverse effects was higher in the VEX group, 42.9% as compared to the paclitaxel group. That was only 28.6%. Uh, when we compared both the arms. Alopecia, uh, the hand foot syndrome, peripheral neuropathy, nausea, fatigue, they were all significantly by, uh, higher in the VEX regimen arm. Next slide. Now, this uh, trial is, uh, is uh, 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 an uh, important uh, trial in uh, terms of uh, going back to our oral metronomic treatment as the first line treatment or a second line treatment in metastatic breast cancer uh, patients. It has significantly shown uh, improvement in TTF as compared to the standard paclitaxel uh, regimen. The median TTF was 8.3 months versus 5.7 months respectively. And at 12 months, the TTF was 34% as compared to 8.6%. And uh, PFS was also significantly better in these patients who had received the VEX regimen. Although there was no significant difference in the overall survival, uh, although the uh, grade three side effects were much higher in the VEX regimen, uh, but I think uh, TTF and PFS is quite significant. We need to consider that and probably a, a, a larger trial and a phase three trial should give us a more information whether the, this type of regimen should be offered to our patients who have a good performance status and who have metastatic breast cancer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Mukit.